Okay, thank you for coming. That's in the first place. I will take it for granted that as we are on at PyData, you will all know what weak supervision is. At I doubt if you know what snorkel is. Maybe some of you will associate the name with this particular item which is used for snorkeling. But don't be worried, we won't be talking about it. Uh, but the goal of this presentation is to introduce snorkel as a tool for you and I will try to answer some questions about how could you potentially benefit from using snorkel and what you can achieve from it or with it. But before I do so, let me introduce my team that I've been cooperating with on the project that I will outline in a second. Uh, the key here is that it is a multidisciplinary team and that's a key factor that contributed to the success or not uh, of this project. Uh, as you may see, most of them are biologists, but my presentation won't be that heavily impacted by biology. So it should be comprehensible for all of the audience here. What is biological, at, at least in some extent, is the problem that I've been faced with. So let's assume that we are looking for useful information for our research. We have a research question on bacteria, namely some strains of bacteria, and the relation or uh, interaction with antibiotics. So we would like to know if a given strain is responsible or susceptible to a given antibiotic. We are looking for this piece of information in a document. It can be a scientific paper or a patent, but if we outline this project, the problem like that, it's pretty straightforward. You just read the document, scan it, look for the name of the strain, look for the name of the antibiotic, and you are quickly, you will probably quickly find what is the answer or if there is any intervention, interaction between bacterium and an antibiotic. We can slightly complicate the problem by adding more documents. So you just retrieve more of them, you need to read all of them, you need to scan all of them, whatever you do, just there are more of them. That's the key. But still it's probably manageable by uh, a person, uh, the expert domain, that can uh, retrieve the, this particular piece of information from those documents. But let me complicate it one step further and add multiple strains. Then it's getting more and more entangled, but still we have this hook, the name of the antibiotic that we can first retrieve documents on and then search for this particular word within the text of the document and try to look if within the antibiotic there is a strain in the sentence and try to figure out what the inter uh, interaction between them is. And of course, as some of you may think, there is the next step when we have multiple antibiotics. Now it's an uh, end-to-end -end problem. It's getting terribly um, difficult, not only on the step of retrieval of documents, but also when you are reading them. You, are, you need to be focused on multiple things at the same time. And it's basically uh, uh, not manageable by one, one person or even multiple persons who are not domain experts. And let it put it into a numerical perspective. What, I, what do I mean by multiple documents? Namely, 150,000 of them. And as I said previously, they, are, they all are patents, which are horrible lecture. You, you, you are not going to read it. They are written in a particular style that makes them a very heavy read and uh, scientific documents that uh, where, multi where the information that you are looking for may be m mystified by some irrelevant details. It's basically what I mean by that. It's, it's heavy, it's horrendous, and you don't want to do that. So, as we are at PyData, you may think of this problem as a deep learning problem. So did I. Let's use deep learning, AI, whatever you wish. But, and this is a the most general view of typical mm, machine learning uh, problem when, and let's assume for a moment that our algorithm that we will be using for, f f to solve it is a black box. We, we, we are at the moment not interested in that. What we are interested in, that you need some data to feed into this uh, particular algorithm of your choice. So 
you feed it with some pairs, an observation and the corresponding label. But at some point, you need to ask yourself a question. What are X's? How do I get them? What do I feed my network with? And probably network. You are all thinking about networks, I bet. And where do I get Y's from? That's still not very, that's even more uh, complicated problem, particularly because we don't have any labels here. I mean, I can know that there is an information in the sentence, but how can I convey, how can I bring this information to my, algorithm, to, to my uh, machine learning problem? But let me propose you a simple solution that some of you may be persuaded with, others not. But let's take for us for, for granted that a sentence is a carrier of an information, that we are looking for sentences where our information resides. And we will be focusing on it as a unit of processing. One sentence will be our unit of processing. So we are particularly interested in sentence when two entities, where two entities co-occur. One entity is a strain of bacteria that we can recognize by its name, and the other one is an antibiotic. And when the pair in a sentence co-occurs, we have a very strong indication that it may be a sentence that is of interest for us. That's not everything, but it's a very good beginning. The more slightly more complicated situation is with whys. I've, when I was preparing for this presentation, I came across, not only for this presentation, also um, in the meantime when I was working on my project, I uh, came across these two papers that are in the footnote of the slide, that you can come up with some ingenious mixture of weakly labeled and strongly labeled data and feed it into uh, your algorithm. In both cases, they were neural networks and get the most of it. And as you can see, we only need a small, a handful of labeled data, and we can fill the gaps with uh, weekly labeled data. But still, a, a question remains, where do we get that 99.9% .9 of weekly labeled data from? There needs to be a good way to do it, even more. That's a crucial part, because as authors, especially of the second paper, claim the better the quality of weekly, weekly, weekly labeled data, the better will be our final outcome, which should be no surprise to you. So I've made a research on the net, and I found Snorkel. The authors of the Snorkel uh, come from Stanford University. They have their own hazy research laboratory that develops multiple pro uh, projects, uh, pro uh, uh, namely tools. And some of them may tell you that it's a system for quickly generating training data with weak supervision or that it can help you rapidly creating modeling and managing training data. And that's all true. But I will tell you that it's a Python module, just like it is. OK, before we move on, let me uh, outline to you what a typical pipeline of a snorkel uh, uh, project may look like. So first, of course, we need some data. It can be raw data. You can achieve it, uh, you can obtain it from multiple sources, whatever you wish, databases, uh, online, you name it. Uh, it has to be structured in some way. Snorkel has tools that can help you achieve that, but you can do it on your own. Once you have all your raw data in a format that is required by Snorkel, you can move to the next part, it's document parsing. We, all of the people who are working at some point with text data in machine learning need that it's, uh, do know that it is a, a crucial step and the sentences, the text, the whole, your corpus needs to be processed in some way. Uh, for my needs, I was uh, using Spacey. And as a result of tokenization, lemmatization and s some more steps, we obtain documents that are split into sentences. And the term sentence here, not uh, by accident coincides with the, our carrier of information that I was mentioning earlier. One sentence here is a unit of processing further on. Okay, so we have our documents parsed and ready, and we have sentences. So let's pass it to named entity recognizer. To start with anything in this matter, we need to have pairs, we need to have entities tagged within sentences. You may use out-of-the-box uh, 
tagger, but I haven't ever found one. No one tags bacteria or antibiotics in sentences. So I need to come up with some, um, some tools that can fill the gaps. But you, you need to have those. Okay, so let's start that we ha happily um, tagged our entities so we can process those uh, marked sentences further on. And we have candidates. One candidate will be, uh, we want to extract the candidates that are of any use to us. So in the first place, we are, we are looking for sentences where those two entities co-occur, as I said previously. And we eliminate all of the sentences where there is only one or none entities marked. In this way, we obtain the good candidates. And now where the magic happens, or maybe not magic, but at least some heavy mass. Uh, we need this notion of helper functions. Those are very simple functions written in Python, as uh, Snorkel is a Python module, that can score your candidates with the problem, with the research question that you have in mind. Those, question, th those uh, scores don't need to be exact, don't need to be precise, but they should provide some feel, some indication on usefulness of a sentence for your research question. I will come back to that uh, in a second. The thing is that after you passed, you passed all your sentences through helper functions, for each sentence, for each candidate, you obtain one numerical vector uh, comprised of n numbers. Uh, that will be used further on. And maybe let's stop here uh, for a moment. And what are those minus ones, ones, and zeros? So Snorkel is designed in such a way that you can make a helper functions to not make any decision. It abstains and then it produces zero. If it, it has, if it doesn't know what to do with the sentence, if it's helpful for you or not. And as I told you, we are looking for interactions, susceptibility, resistance to an antibiotic, but that's not everything that we want to know. Even better, it would be if we had a precise information. If this given strain with this given antibiotic in this given document is described as resistant or susceptible. That's why we have two directions in which we can score, we can grade our candidates. One stays for, for example, resistance minus one for susceptibility. It doesn't matter at this moment and it's not relevant. The thing is that we can distinguish those two directions, which is, for example, crucial for you uh, as it may spare you some post-processing time further on. Okay, once we have our, all of our sentences score, we pass all of those vectors for all of candidates to generative model. And not, I won't let you be misled by the name of generative model. It's a notion uh, introduced by the authors of Snorkel. But for the sake of completeness, it's not generative model as, for example, in image processing, where you generate images. No, it generates one label. One label per each candidate. It's called probabilistic label that conveys information about usefulness of this particular candidate in your problem, as I mentioned. We always have to keep this problem in our heads. So it mm, combines multiple statistical tools into something useful that summarizes somehow those, mm, th those numerical vectors. Okay, but some of you probably uh, could uh, accuse me after the presentation that it's of no interest for them because I, will be, I, I was talking about textual data and you are working with images or something else. But please mind that the last two steps go beyond text data. In my case, as I was working with corpus corpora of documents, I, I really had text data. But what's the problem if you want to judge a uh, uh, an image or a sound wave? If only you could come up with some functions that will roughly grade what you have at hand and input it into Snorkel, uh, disregarding all the previous steps, you can still go on with that tool. The thing is that you will get one label, one numerical label for each of your entities. Okay, but as I promised, uh, I'm coming back to helper functions because this is uh, probably the most uh, important part of the whole pipeline, especially, and that I cannot stress that enough. This is the only place where you can input domain expertise 
into the pipeline. So everything relies heavily on that. All of the previous steps were prob some, some to some are to some extent standardized, but this one is where you can show your skills to the fullest. And what are the correct or, or what are the uh, examples of helper functions? So, for example, in my case, when I was looking for resistance susceptibility interactions, I may ask my sentence if it comprises word resistant as having a uh, tagged entities of both kinds in a sentence, and additionally having a word resistance means almost 100% sure that this is sentence I'm looking for. If you are looking, if you are designing a model which will distinguish sports car from other cars, you may ask the, 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 the image of your uh, choice if it has a reddish patch in there, because as we all know, some sports car only come in red, and so on, and so on. So what our helper functions do is actually they help us get rid of whys whatsoever. We substitute our whys that we were previously missing with some assessments of our sentence that we provide as input to our very general algorithm. But that's not the end. There is still generative model. Generative model, as I, uh, as I was trying to convince you by this time, accepts only heuristics. No. As helper functions, you can provide everything you wish. Let it be heuristic. Let it be pattern. You can in make as an input distance supervision, which is you can compare something that you found with already existing, uh, existing uh, external database where some, some data was curated. Uh, you, if you pushed uh, crowdsourcing to solve your problem, but you know that the results are not perfect. Just put it into generative model. Finally, that's very precious. If you have domain experts that can help you with assessing some sentences at least, let's use them. Let's ask them questions and try to input the, their responses into the model. And finally, but not ultimately, we classifiers. They are easy to run. They can quickly give you some very rough estimation of your sentence and they can be easily included into generative model. So how does our generative model place in the diagram that I've shown? So it basically um, takes all of the helper function input and generates one label. And some of you may ask, what is the issue? Why do we do that is, if it's necessary at all? So the authors of the paper uh, that I will show in a second, as I think, um, as I, uh, as I remember, argue that including generative model uh, augments results by 5%. And it's not something that you can easily neg neglect, especially that it's not that time consuming. This step is pretty, pretty quick. So now you have one sentence and a numerical score for that sentence. Once you are in this position, you may do everything you like using your favorite algorithm for, to solve any problem that you have. Okay, but as at, we are at pay data, I was referring to the data part, now to the Pi part. So let's talk briefly about uh, Python. So what is Snorkel on technical side? So it's an ORM software, which is also some kind of bottleneck for it, but I will uh, go to that in a second, where the results of every intermediate step of the pipeline that I've been showing is stored in a database. So that's why we have this SQL Alchemy as an interface in between. We have also support for uh, Spark clusters that if you want to have, have your calculations distributed, uh, there is a, an easy, a, easy integration. What I didn't tell you that for a problem like mine, where you need to extract information from raw text, there is embedded model into Snorkel that enables uh, this problem to be uh, solved in end-to-end -end fashion. Uh, the final mm, neural network is written in PyTorch, but it was previously written in uh, TensorFlow. The package is still uh, evolving. Uh, the last commits were not even a whole month ago. Uh, Snorkel provides embedded uh, support for two natural language processing 
uh, frameworks, namely uh, NLTK and SPICY, but what is relevant for you, and it was crucial for me, uh, you may uh, substitute any uh, step within those, uh, within those uh, processing uh, tools with your own. And that's why I could come up with a custom entity recognition mechanism. And it was devised as Jupyter Notebook tool, which makes it easy to run. And finally, of course, multiprocessing is, is uh, ensured because otherwise you wouldn't deal with 150,000 documents. What are the downsides, on the other hand? I would like to persuade you that I'm not paid by Stanford to, uh, to sell it to you. It, it's free, by the way. Uh, so I've also noted some, uh, some downsides when I was working with it. And I don't know if you agree, but my data was quite, consider uh, quite considerable in size. That's what I think this tool wasn't ready for, because it doesn't have, for example, uh, or maybe I will uh, skip to it in a second. But first thing that uh, I, I was ha struggling with is that the solution is pretty inflexible. Every change to it is a burden that you have to carry. So it's not straightforward, not at all, to make any changes in the very engine of Snorkel. And as it comes free, you can make any changes you want. Uh, the second thing is that uh, because of the SQL alchemy that was... Uh, in that is incorporated in the pipeline, and uh, it is heavily incorporated, the load speed is very, very low. So you can enhance that, and there are ways to do it. I, I did it. Uh, but by default, it, it's not perfect. And what is even more troubling for some of us uh, is that whenever you have some new piece, new bunch of uh, documents coming, you cannot append it to already existing database. You need to start afresh and recalculate everything, which is silly, at least for the initial steps of the pipeline where the model is not involved. Uh, but it can, it can be overcome. And finally, everything is written to work in, in an in-memory fashion, which makes uh, calculation or processing of corpus of documents like mine impossible to do it uh, like from off-the-shelf product. So I had to make some uh, alterations to it and chunkify, for example, documents to be of a certain size that fits my memory and doesn't uh, throw an error with that. So these are, these are the most uh, relevant tips that I can give you as a practitioner of Snorkel and by no means evangelist of it. Okay, so my presentation is ready. Uh, I didn't expect it to go that fast. So I think it uh, leaves us with some QA and time if you have any questions. Uh, can I? <laughs> uh, thank you for the presentation. This might actually be really useful for my work. Um, I have one question regarding the, the need for the database. Uh, do they ex did they explain why they need a database and not just, okay, there is a data frame, you pass us this data frame, and okay. Uh, I know what you mean. Uh, I've been considering it as well, if it's already, if it's at all necessary. But maybe if you have a second thought on it, it may be useful for you. Because otherwise you would have to store it somehow. The, all, the whole corpus of documents you have, whole parsed corpus of documents, let it be, I don't know, if you would like to pickle it or store it in data frames, and it would be quickly messy, very messy. You, wouldn't, you would have difficulties in tracking which uh, steps of the pipeline are stored in which data frame or in which, each file. And of course, you may uh, strip the whole pipeline of the data uh, base altogether, especially if your corpus is relatively small. But I found it useful. When you enhance the speed, uh, the, the load of the data into the database, it can be, you can live with it. And then everything is uh, coherent inside the database. So I, I was also skeptical at the beginning, but as, as the time went by, I, 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 I was starting to like it even more. I just have one additional question. They use generative models. One of the things, let's consider Bayesian networks. It's a, an example. If, uh, depending on what data you use, you can update the priors and posteriors. So you need, uh, and what is confusing me is that you need to recalculate the entire thing again, but you are using a generative model. 
So it's kind of... And that's the uh, caveat that I haven't made. It's not a generative model as, as you would like to... Uh, would it like to be? No, it's a statistical based, more, more than machine learning based. I don't know if, if the, the, the distinguish before, between these two terms is very uh, um, slight, and I, I don't know if you get it, but you don't use any machine learning algorithm there. It's pure statistics where some in interdependencies in, uh, between the helper functions are exploited in order to generate the best possible label. So you take into account possible uh, correlations between helper functions, how they score. You take uh, the coverage of each helper function, if it is very, uh, if it scores um, much of your data or, or very tiny pieces of your data, and uh, if it tightly overlaps with other helper functions. This is the, the generative model that they are using and not a Bayesian network. That's why probably they need to start everything afresh because what generative model is about is uh, finding some parameters, some weights uh, that you impose further on on each and every helper function. So that's why probably it needs to be started afresh. But as I said, it's not crucial because it's not the most time-consuming process, uh, m most, consuming, uh, most time consuming part of this pipeline. So you are good to go with it. Okay, any more questions? Maybe I should have been a little bit slower. Maybe there wasn't, wouldn't be so much time for our questions. If you have text in any other language that is supported for by uh, your language processing tool, you may use it. It's language in different, as long as it has, for example, in Spice, you have multiple languages, so you can use every that is supported by them. <clears throat> uh, question, did you have a chance to compare the results uh, generated by the Wix supervision with annotated data? Uh, so with the ground truth, as you have I hate. Stated. I, I had. Uh, I couldn't show it because it's intellectual property issue. Uh, but I had, and that's another tip from a practitioner. I'm not by no means an expert in biology. I could come up with some helper functions. I was very proud of them. I, I wrote like 16 or 18 of them. Uh, and you, you know, if you're not a domain expert, it's something. It, it means something to you. And I run on those helper functions the whole procedure, and uh, I've prepared a very small corpus of annotated sentences beforehand, and I was curious how do they, um, uh, how they are scored uh, eventually after the generative model uh, comes up with a label for them. And the results were deeply disappointing. So out of 15 or 16 sentences that are annotated, only four would be caught up uh, by uh, the model to be of interest for me. And the good thing is that it's, oh, sorry, the presentation is gone. Ah, it's irrelevant at this point. Uh, so what you can do is to write uh, some uh, helper functions, let them score the corpus of candidates that you have, and find out if they are interesting to you, if the uh, insight that they provide is interesting to you. Currently, uh, when I was doing it, Snorkel didn't have tools for that, but in version 0.7, uh, they introduced some tools that can help you um, uh, make some reasoning about helper functions uh, on the fly. So you don't have to run the generative model, but you can uh, run all the helper functions against your candidates and check if the quality of what you get is, is satisfying. And I've made a second iteration. I've improved my uh, helper functions, and then only then the results were fine. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm afraid we're running out of time, but uh, I'm sure we can catch our speaker during the coffee break. Uh, thank you very much. Big applause for our speaker. Applause.